It is common knowledge that at one time there was an abuse problem in the walking horse show industry. It was addressed in the 70s and a law was put in place to correct it. That law was the Horse Protection Act, which in my opinion is a good law if it is enforced correctly by both sides. It is only when one side places itself above that law that we have problems in the inspection area. When inspections first started, the USDA sent in veterinary medical officers, VMOs, to oversee the inspections. The VMOs were there to help the industry and benefit the walking horse breed. That quickly changed and the VMOs started getting involved in the inspection process. From that point on, the government got more and more involved, creating more problems while not benefiting the show industry, but causing as much harm as possible. Over the years, the owners and trainers started breeding more wisely and changing training methods that kept our horse in better condition and in compliance with the HPA. While our trainers were doing a far better job, the USDA was being pressured by the HSUS, so they started changing the way they did inspections. They learned how to make a horse move by pressing on certain nerves and became very creative in finding what they called scars, even though no one but a VMO could find it. A VMO making statements like there is a scar here, even though it is only two or three cells thick, is not unheard of. When you can feel the roll of the top of it, that's, that's a scar, even if it's only two or three cells thick. During horse shows, if a horse was turned down, it could show back in another class if it could pass the next inspection process, but VMOs would turn down a horse for a scar rule violation and later pass that same horse for another class. This is well documented having happened multiple times. It happened so much that the government made a change to the rule that once a horse was turned down, it could not show back at that show. That change really affected the celebration because many horses were entered multiple times and now if one VMO said it was out, it was out for the entire two weeks. Since VMOs could dream up violations, it became a major gamble to enter multiple times. The USDA agreed to show how right they were when they turned down a horse that they agreed to allow a second opinion by another VMO, but when they couldn't agree and would actually argue with each other over who was right and who was wrong, they no longer allowed a second opinion. In 2017, the USDA became so obsessed in turning one horse down that they kept him in the inspection until his class was called and he could no longer show. The horse passes the DQP inspection and the USDA never found anything wrong with the horse. This led to the USDA making another one of their moves to protect themselves. The USDA became very protective of the way they inspected horses in fear of the public seeing what a poor job they were doing. They would stand in front of a person using a camera or simply have them removed from the inspection area as they did to a Channel 5 news crew. Only after a video law was passed were we able to video the corrupt inspection process used by the USDA videoing their illegal inspection during the very first show. My name is Dr. Stephen L. Mullins. I'm a 1980 graduate of Auburn University School of Veterinary Medicine. I've been in equine practice since 1980. Here we see a VMO inspecting a horse. She's checking the posterior part of the foot. You can see right here, she's using the end of her thumb. She's not using the meaty part of her thumb like the Horse Protection Act regulations say to use. You can see her right here, she'll use the end of her thumb and press down against the collateral cartilage and she's hitting the posterior branch of the palmar digital nerve. She's using the end of her thumb, which is not the proper technique to palpate a horse. It's a false positive. At one time, the USDA hired a retired FBI agent to investigate the walking horse industry. But when his investigation showed it was the VMOs at fault, not the trainers, he was fired immediately. I wasn't being real critical. I was just stating my observations and my impressions as I had gleaned that in going to the shows and interviewing a number of people. In fact, I offered to stay on, uh, uh, on their retainer and to see if I could mediate some, some of the differences. And the lady that I spoke with very quickly, very tactfully, but very firmly said, no, my, my services were no longer needed. And, and the, contract was terminated. It seems the truth did not support their agenda, so they decided on another avenue. One of those avenues was threatening inspectors if they didn't turn down certain horses. Another avenue, and is still used, is threatening a trainer or owner with a federal violation if the DQP didn't write the violation or threatening the DQP if they didn't. Both of these avenues are borderline illegal. 
It has been scientifically proven time after time that the action device or pads do no harm to our horse, but the continued pressure by an organization that has been charged for paying a witness to lie under oath, the HSUS, they want to take the pads and action device away, which will cause major harm to the walking horse show industry and cost legal charities thousands of dollars, which is badly needed to support their cause. It makes an honest person wonder what it is that an elected U.S. representative or senator would gain by doing the bidding of a known corrupt organization like the HSUS by destroying an industry that has obeyed every law put in place. What are they gaining? Time after time, the walking horse breed has answered the call and met the expectations of the USDA. And each time the USDA has asked for more and changed their methods of inspections while banning legal substances for every other breed for use on a walking horse. It is time all equine breeds take notice to what is being done to the walking horse and understand that we are only the first. If they destroy us, they are next because groups like the HSUS have to have someone to attack in order to raise funds. So guess who that someone is going to be?